Hello viewers and welcome to another episode of the Enoch Generation, a generation that walks with God. Well, today in our studios we have with us Cherry Michelle. I think uh, most of you will be very familiar with this figure. She's none other than the daughter of Pastor Alvin Thomas and uh, she is a worship leader. She has a beautiful journey to share with us. So over to Cherry Michelle. I mean, I find it very odd calling you Cherry Michelle <laughs> because I'm so used to calling you Pinky. Yes. Well, I may call you Pinky in between, okay? That's okay. So whatever it is, we're so happy to have you with us today. And, Such a uh, privilege to be here as well. In fact, I've been watching you as a little kid. Yes. I just knew you as a little kid and it's so nice to see you um, worshipping with your dad mm. and ministering, you know, so powerfully. Amen. I should tell you maybe I would become your fan or something like that <laughs> huh? because I really sit and appreciate the way you do things and you know in such a young age and thank you. Thank you God so is really much. you know is moving so powerfully Amen. in you and so I would like you to share your journey with us like right from childhood sure how was your life okay so um, auntie knows me ever since I was a very small kid so growing up I grew up in a Christian family was born and brought up in a Christian family and the soon after I was born when I was about one and a half years old mom and dad they stepped into ministry so basically all my life I've been into ministry and I've been a pastor's kid so church outside of church I don't know anything of the world okay. so I was so protected and I grew up in a very enclosed community I was always surrounded by Christians I always grew up in church even when I was a kid uh, while preparing for exams and stuff I used to sit in church and study as uh, oh my, my parents <laughs> you were more like a Samuel <laughs> <laughs> could be <laughs> but I think this is the story of every pastor's kid because we always we have to be with our parents but they are always in the church so we end up preparing and doing whatever people would do at home but at church so okay. that was basically my uh, upbringing as a kid because I still remember you used to have a you know room right uh, behind the <laughs> yes. uh, stage and uh, yes. several nights I knew that as a family used to sleep there yes <laughs> and I used to wonder my god how did they even manage this <laughs> That's true, yeah. but um, my life was very different compared to all of my other friends, mm -hmm. especially during school because everybody else would have a very different experience with life but when they asked where are you going what's your plan for the weekend it's always church it's always ministry and it's always been church <laughs> so all your activities were around the church yes so that was your playground that's where yes. you slept that's where you ate that's where you yeah. studied that's where you grew up well that's that sounds true. nice <laughs> It is. Uh, so I had the wonderful opportunity of growing up as a pastor's kid. So my relationship with Jesus began when I was very young. Okay. But there was one pivotal moment which marked my relationship with Jesus. And that's actually the basement and the foundation for what I'm doing now. Wow. Mm -hmm. So in 2007, that was when we had our first concert. Okay. So we have a concert called Freedom Concert. So in that concert um, I was one of the dancers and I was one of the singers behind for all the worship songs so uh, on the last day of it's usually a three-day concert so okay. on the third day evening my aunt she comes up to me and she says you have to sing a song along with your dad I was about six years old back then Wow! so mm. I was a very small kid so I do whatever you tell me I to. think you're still a small kid <laughs> so you can continue to some yes <laughs> <laughs> to me yes yes <laughs> thank you auntie <laughs> but uh, yeah I was really small back then so whatever they tell me to do I just blindfoldly I'll do it so that evening is a concert afternoon she made me memorize the entire song okay. and she taught it to me and my dad didn't know that I was going to come on stage. It okay. was a surprise to him. Mm -hmm. So this was an altar call song. So at the end of the concert, while everybody, they were called in front to give their life to Jesus, uh, dad sang the song called Anupum. Okay. It's called Send Me. Yeah. So the meaning of the song is very powerful. 
but I quickly I learned the song that afternoon and uh, my aunt she sent me on stage as dad was singing so my dad was so surprised and shocked that I joined him on stage because he wasn't expecting that but I went and I joined on stage and we had this moment where we saw each other and we we synced into the meaning of the song and we started crying looking at wow. each other me and my dad I'll never forget that moment even though I was very uh, I was a very small kid back then but that moment is very precious to me because that marked my life because the song that I was singing the lyrics that I was singing I didn't know the meaning of it back then but I sang it with my whole heart mm -hmm. as a commitment to Jesus so anupum umuliyam seidirave ennai anupum so as i was singing that uh, dad started to cry then i started to cry and a lot of young people they were touched by that song because that song carried a powerful anointing and it touched a lot of young people and even to this day in our church a lot of people uh, they'll come up to me and they'll say you know it's because of that song that I'm here today wow. and I'm because of that song I'm a Christian today and I'm living a Christ filled life so that was when it all started even before I knew the intense meaning of what I was saying but God put the right words into my mouth and I'm so blessed to be living out what I sang back then so that was a very pivotal moment in my life so I think uh, you know you being in a pastor's family and being reared as a Christian God had some beautiful plan for you that yes at the age of six to be touched by the Holy Spirit you know and being used so powerfully on stage is really something mm -hmm. which is mind-boggling yeah but when God decides to use somebody That's age true. means nothing to him yeah. so I still remember that song that you <laughs> sang with your dad and I know it's a very powerful song and as you said Many lives have been touched and transformed through that one yeah. song. So, but it would have been such a proud moment for your dad, isn't yes. it? Yes. <laughs> so he he ministering with the six year old is. Yes. I mean, it's really awesome. So your journey began then, mm -hmm. is it? So after that, how did it go? Have you been, you know, uh, ministering with dad right from that age, mm -hmm. or did you have a break in between or something like that? So after that every now and then I dad made it a point to get me on stage and I was a very shy kid back then so he'd push me to my uh, out of my comfort zone and he'll give me a song or two to sing during meetings and okay. uh, in churches and stuff like that but basically after then while I was growing up I of course I grew up in church and after I came to a certain age uh, dad started to give the platform for me to lead worship as well so I started leading worship in our church so I used to lead worship in the English service and yeah so that's how my worship journey began okay so basically because dad is uh one of the worship warriors I should say <laughs> so he wanted his daughter also to be molded into worship yes. and I think it runs in your blood too <laughs> so you moved into this ministry of praising and worshiping the Lord yes okay so are you confined to this ministry or you know has your uh, what to say I mean have you moved into different dimensions mm. how has it been so now uh, it's changed a little because worship was something that I chose for myself even though my dad's a worship leader and uh, most of my family members are doing worship ministry as well okay. now so but it was my personal choice that I wanted to choose worship because it was something that was so impactful in my life but now um, I see God moving me into different uh, into different spheres of ministry so I've been preaching recently wow. and mm, especially awesome. yeah, thank mm. you especially to a lot of young people okay so that's been amazing it's a new experience but I'm loving it mm. it's so scary sometimes but <laughs> it's pushing me to my limits and mm. I'm enjoying what I do and also I've been um, serving a, as a creative pastor in our church okay so that looks like 
uh, organizing uh, creative elements for the meetings and especially with the stage design and all of those because I interned in my college as a creative uh, director wow. so mm. there it looked a lot like arranging a lot of elements on stage and bringing something creative to the team and something different and new and I've been uh, loving doing that. So I think God has put a lot of seeds of greatness inside of you, a lot of creativity. Amen. And it's so beautiful, you know, to see it blossom in different ways. So maybe as parents, they nurtured you, they brought you to a certain level. But when the Holy Spirit starts operating, mm -hmm. I mean, like it's boom and you don't know where you're going and what you're doing. It's yeah, like, true. am I doing this? Yes. You know, it's like that. So it's really nice that and because... Um, as a family, you are ministering and you are involved, dad and mom and mm -hmm. your brother, everybody involved in different facets of ministry. So it's really nice to have somebody who can organize things for them, mm -hmm. make it move a step further yes. and bring in the creativity of the Holy Spirit you know, to yes. reach and impact lives in a better way. It's really beautiful what you are doing. Thank so, you. But as a kid, how mm -hmm. did you manage your friends at school and uh, you know, the church? Mm -hmm. You, know, you, you would have found you know, a contrast. Yes. So how did you manage this? Where did you strike the balance? <laughs> so growing up, there's this one saying that has always been in my family, even till this day. Uh, my dad always said, be in the world, but not of the world. So that was a very hard balance to find as a kid because all my friends were very different because none of them had the experience and the exposure and the life that I was living. But I think the line was when because my friends were all Christian, uh, Christian friends as well and they were very supportive and they were very understanding of what I was going through. So they gave me the room and the space to be myself. Uh, because not a lot of friends have that opportunity to be that because they find it so out of sync when they're talking to somebody out of their zone or out exactly. of their circle. So I am very thankful that my friends gave me the space to be myself and we'd have conversations where we'll always encourage each other. And recently I've been so blessed to have amazing friends who are doing exactly what I do. So we are all in the same sphere of uh, ministry and worship so they are a constant help and a constant support to me and I'm just so happy that I am able to do my life with them because they are all pastors kids as well so we get to share a lot of special <laughs> experiences that only we'll be able to get so that's something that's very beautiful that God has blessed me with but I think the balance and the strike was we should never lose ourselves when we go into the world so when i go out with them i always make sure i carry jesus wherever i go even though they are uh, they might not be in the same belief because i did have a lot of friends of the of different religions but i never was ashamed as a kid to portray Jesus wherever I go so I'd never be ashamed to talk about him and I think that strike the balance that they knew that Cherry is a Christian Cherry is a follower of Christ so she will not indulge in certain things that we do and they were very kind enough to not force me to do certain things because I think it's that one thing that my parents drilled into me as I was a kid that we are not of the world. So I think that's where the balance, I should say, that came in. Because uh, as a pastor's daughter, we like people expect so much out of you, isn't yes. it? It goes with a stigma. So yes. anybody else doing the same thing would be passed off. Okay, doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, not when it comes to a pastor's daughter. That's You're true. always under a yes. bracket, I should say. That's true. And um, how did you manage such moments? Because uh, as a child, every child is a child. So no matter what sort of atmosphere you grow in, you have the child like character inside of you. Yes. You may fail at times. So at those moments when you would have failed, mm. how did you actually uh, react to the whole thing? Or how did the people around you react? Or how were you able to, you know, kind of surpass that stage in your life? So for me, I grew up in the eye of the public. <laughs> so a lot of different people, not only my family, but a lot of different people had opinions about everything that I did, which was not very easy. 
which was a little bit hard to manage every now and then because it's sometimes very discouraging because you're trying your best but you're also only human but every time some thing would happen something negative would happen something that would impact me in the wrong way i think uh, something that I did was to go up to my parents. So okay. I would always go to them for advice, for support. And they never gave me up in front of people because even though uh, we are always in the limelight, we are still family. So family has been a great support in supporting me and covering me when I was not able to. And when I was in my weakest point, they were always with me and they were ready to support me because we've been doing a family uh, ministry together as a family so during tough times we make sure we always come around each other and that has been a huge help and support when something negative happens in my life so that's actually beautiful because you've got understanding parents whom you can go back to mm -hmm. and uh, who would nurture you and put you back you know yeah. into your destiny it's really lovely and uh, but with all that criticism as a little kid when you were I mean, like for the first time you're faced with so much of criticism mm -hmm. how did you react to the whole thing how did your entire system react to it <laughs> i was very heartbroken okay. very disappointed because i was expecting the same that i expected out of my family from people outside my family as well which was not something that was easy and it's not something that's easily given to everybody because there's a lot of criticism um, all the time no matter what you're doing there's uh, always going to be criticism but um, I think I was very low very disappointed very angry at myself for doing certain things but I think there had to be a point where I had to accept the forgiveness of Jesus as well because my family has always supported me and they've always been with me but uh, while I seek for validation from people outside of my family it's not easy and that was a tough lesson to be learned that we cannot please everybody with what we do but also be if it's a good criticism it's always good to take it and to implement it in the places where you're supposed to grow and where you are to learn more so that's how I was able to deal with it. Okay, it was really nice listening to Cherry Michelle <laughs> and uh, she told us about uh, how she kept walking with the Lord and how God uh, literally began to use her from when she was just a little child, just a six year old. So, and um, she's been going through thick and thin and uh, God has given her a supportive family and God has seen her through till this point in her life. So we will be hearing more from her in our next episode. Till then, it's a goodbye and God bless.
கோபத்தில் என்னை தாங்கிடவே சோர்வுகள் மத்தியில் என்னை தேற்றிடுவே காட்டுவீ 